G'day everyone. Okay, let's try for another one. Second one today. Um, oh, look, this is sitting on my desktop. I haven't actually read a great deal of it. I sort of briefed it. Um, but, you know, we've got to look at it because we all need a laugh through this time, don't we? Okay, from uh, feminismandreligion.com. The truth revealed by cannavirus. It's all connected. By Judith, Judith Shaw. She knows it's all connected. Ah, cannavirus is revealing many truths to this world. A world grounded in the patriarchal consciousness of domination and separation for millennia. Well, there's the first statement I'm sure is not quite true. Separate? What? Domination and separate? Why domination and separation? What are we talking about here? I don't understand. Domination of society, separation of family, that's... I don't... I, oh, Christ, if she'd, you know, pinned this to something, maybe we'd know what the fuck she was talking about, but it's just really word salad, isn't it? Though still on the fringes of society, societal awareness, the ancient wisdom of community and connection remains alive and growing. Uh, God, if she started speaking about witchcraft now, I wouldn't be so fucking surprised at all because the ancient wisdom of community and connection just sounds like she's about to start preaching um, the spirits of the air shit at me. Um, but all right, she's all big on the ancient wisdom of community and connection, social awareness. So let's move on. Before this novel virus hit, the rise in nationalism put forth by autocratic, lead aut autocratic leaders? Where does she believe that in the first world, because I'm guessing she's only talking about the first world, I, these people never talk about the Arab world where it's probably true. Uh, they rarely talk about Africa because dare they talk about black people. Um, but yeah... I, I'm wondering which people she's declaring to be autocrats here. For anyone not in the know, an autocrat is basically someone with all uh, all the power in their hands. You know, you can think of China as an autocracy, with the uh, Communist Party having all the power and one man at the top having declared himself leader for life. Um, definitely an autocrat. I wonder if she's talking about the Chinese here. Uh, autocratic leaders over the past few years have been on the rise. They have. Uh, was Donald Trump not stymied quite often in the Senate by the Democrats? Does that make him an autocrat? I ask this because I live in Australia and I'm not really sure I thought that was the case. In my own country, um, our government has got something of majority but there's still enough power in the other side of the house to keep them on their toes uh the uk was pretty much a balanced parliament until fairly recently uh and i think that that turned the way it has because people didn't like the way it was i'm not sure that that's to do with autocrats more to do with the voting public just being pissed anyway the autocrats have created an increase in fear and hatred of the other. <laughs> the other. <laughs> the United States. Ah, she thinks the United States is an autocracy. Interesting. Has been at the forefront of this unfortunate movement. <laughs> Trump derangement syndrome is showing through. But plenty of other countries are in the same Closing borders, scapegoating immigrants, and marginalizing uh, inter internal groups that don't don't fit the norm. Um, she's all about social awareness, ancient wisdom of community and connection, but when people seek to protect their communities from harms they are seeing from groups that they can pinpoint, after all, rape gangs don't just exist in the imagination they actually exist in reality in more places than just the uk in europe 
They exist because certain groups were allowed in because of progressive ideas and they have damaged society and community and connections. So I'm sorry, love. I don't know where you're going or where you come from with this, but you're really fucking twisted and bent, aren't you? I, I, I don't think you understand reality at all. From Trump's wall, which he did a fucking brilliant job of, didn't he? He even got some wall built. It's amazing. He turned, turned another country into the wall and then got to build a wall as well. Fucking brilliant. Um, walked all over that shit. Yeah, against a, um, a democratic house standing against him. He still managed. Um, to the attempts by the EU to stop the flow of refu refugees from the Middle Eastern wars. Middle Eastern wars? Which fucking Middle Eastern wars, you dumb bint? Most of those people travelling across to Europe are not coming from war zones. They're economic refugees looking for the easy life in Europe because solving their problems in their own countries is too fucking hard for them. Well, you know what they do? They fuck up their own countries by all the young, talented people leaving. You think that's good for them? Do you think we just let everybody just walk out and desert a country? The message is clear. We've got what we need, and we can't share it with you. We've been sharing it for fucking decades, you idiot. How many refugees do you know? My wife is a bloody uh, a Chinese national living here in Australia, and, you know, her life's much easier than it was when she was in China. I know she thinks China's a wonderful place to be, but I know her life here is much easier. Uh, anyway, the coronavirus has put the whole world in panic, as it spreads, sickens and kills. All around the world, many people are moving into fear and blaming others as we seek to keep ourselves safe. More borders are closing. There are people to blame. Do you not understand that? This virus came from China. Places like New York, it is because of idiots like you going out and hugging Chinese people and insisting that we shouldn't close down because it's, um, you know, we might be being mean to somebody else, uh, caused New York to blow out of shape. Spain, I've just covered that with the um, equality minister hiding the dangers of the virus so that she could get through the Women's March. And now she's infected. Oh, no, we're meant to have a cry for her. There are people to blame. There are people all over the place to blame. There were mistakes made by the people who are doing a very good job now. They also made mistakes. But we're getting there. There are still people to blame. There's a police investigation here in Australia at the moment into a, a ship being allowed to disembark. Because that was the point of our biggest um, single contagion. Do you understand there was someone to blame for that? Someone? Some group of someones? <sighs> but at the same time, simple acts of kindness are on the rise as community members seek ways to bridge and divide between those who can weather the storm and those who really need help. From others to help from offers to help with shopping, to sharing of the Costco card, yeah, okay, a yank thing, to online fundraising efforts aimed at buying food and supplies for children in need, now that so many schools are closed. A spirit of love and cooperation is on the rise. It's what we humans do, you understand that? Do you understand that we've been doing that for so long that it's become a danger to us with these other groups of people that you've so terribly concerned about or you're not terribly concerned but you're going to play that card the immigrants and everyone else coming from the poor war torn, worn torn countries yeah look you're full of shit and humans do rise to the occasion and believe it or not because i know you don't believe it 
You, you go on this patriarchy rant at the start that makes no fucking sense. But men are often the ones who stand up and do the work. They're often the ones who do the delivering and do the uh, picking up of people and carting them around and saving them when the waters are rising. So, yeah. When you say people, what you're trying not to say is there are people out there, including men, doing their part to make the world just that little bit easier to live in at this time. Most no novel diseases originate in wildlife before spreading to humans. That's the point. And since the human family has never encountered these diseases, no one has any immunity to the disease is able, and the disease is able to spread rapidly. Yeah, that's the point. Thank you for putting that there. It was probably, probably the one thing in this thing that made enough sense to be worth reading. This cannavirus has also revealed the connection between the emergence of novel diseases and climate change. No, it hasn't. No, it hasn't. There's no connection to climate change here. If it is true that somebody ate a bat and got this bloody disease, or somebody's ate bats and got this disease, what the fuck are the bats got to do with climate change? Don't eat raw bats. In fact, probably just don't eat bats. Why would anyone eat fucking rodents? Let alone sky rodents. Both medical researchers and climate scientists believe that the Earth's temperature rise and increase in movement of animals, humans, pathogens will rise. What the You've made a fucking great leap here, haven't you? This is all about the fucking... The politicians, the, the autocrats stopping the refugees from the poor little war zones that don't exist. Now all of a sudden it's gone to... Um, climate change is going to make everything fucking ten times worse. This had nothing to do with climate change. Deforestation, either because of corporate... No! The fucking Chinese barely have any forests. I've lived over there, right? The story is my, told about my grand, my father-in-law during the war period, his, his village, is that they hid in the forests when the Japanese invaded. And the Japanese put a small uh, contingent in the village to keep an eye on it. And the village is all hid in the forest and they came out and farmed at night. Well, you couldn't fucking find a forest in that area now to hide in. There is just not enough trees to hide a person in, let alone a village of people in. Um, a couple of the hills have got trees in it. I tell you, if the Japanese want to find you in there, it wouldn't be fucking hard. So, yeah, this has fuck all to do with deforestation or climate change worldwide. This has to do with the Chinese eat everything. Uh, either because of corporate greed or wild, wildfires. Yeah, get fucked. They weren't here in Australia, okay? Our fires did not cause the Chinese to eat bats. Caused by the climate change, major contributor to rising carbon dioxide levels was increasing the delocation... Bollocks! Bollocks! Carbon dioxide is not making animals fucking move. Fucking hell, Jesus, I'm stupid shit in this article. I wish I'd read it first. I might not have bothered to cover it. As our survival truly ba is our survival truly based on survival of the fittest? Well, no, because that's a misreading of the Darwinist the Darwin's Darwin's theory, so maybe that's why you write for feminism and religion. Um, capitalist systems certainly believe that to be that to be true. No, they don't. No, they don't. I mean, a pure capitalist system, yes, but there are no pure capitalist systems in existence. All industry everywhere in the world relies on a number of things. Uh, even, yeah, bloody hell, grants. Are they going to apply for money from the government? Tax breaks, you name it. There are a number of ways that industries can be favoured so that they continue to work. There are no truly 
100% capitalist systems in the world. And if you're going to come down on the capitalists, you have to come down on the fucking Chinese communists as well, because the wealth of that country is built on capitalism. The new economic experiment was essentially building a capitalist economy underneath a communist government. You understand that these things can coexist. You see, we don't live in a capitalist system. We live in a democratic system that is largely capitalist. Fucking hell. Look, if you didn't know what you were writing about, why in the fuck did you put pen to paper? But the great anthropo anthropologist Mar Margaret Mead, oh, for fuck's sake. <sighs> I've heard that name before and it does not impress me. When asked what she considered to be the evidence of civilization, and answered, a human thigh bone with a headed fracture found in the archaeological site 15,000 years ago, years old. One might think she would have said tools or artifacts, but as Mead pointed out, if an animal breaks its leg, it dies, as it has no way to get away from prey or to obtain water. What the fuck are you rambling about, you dim shit? Yeah, okay, so a person broke their bone and they managed to survive because we have a tribal society that care, can care for people. It is the nature of what we are. Okay, I get that. But what the fuck does it have to do with anything here, you fucking idiot? And what the fuck does a broken thigh bone have to do with capitalism? Why are you just throwing words around? Why, why are you trying to fucking confuse people? Because this shit makes no fucking sense. Now that so many of us are staying home, we have time to quiet ourselves, to reach deep inside and open our hearts to the... Prof oh, fucking hell, she's going on the fucking spiritualist rant again, isn't she? Our lives are literally in others' hands to act responsibly with social distancing and proper hygiene. Well, no, I thought the government was doing a pretty good job and the police seemed to be really overdoing the job a bit. Um, borders and the naming... And the naming do not protect us. And the name call what borders and the name calling do not protect us. What the fuck do you think happened to the EU? What do you think the death of the EU is going to be? The death of the EU is a fact that Germany, the number one country screeching for open borders in the EU, a German woman runs the fucking EU. She's the top seat in the EU. And you proclaim borders not to be a thing the first fucking country in europe to close its borders was germany the rest of the eu followed right behind or the eu countries the eu still trying to work out what the fuck to do with its hands oh, i don't know put me in my pockets oh, i don't know fucking eu couldn't make up its mind about anything fucking fit yes borders matter borders do fucking matter Countries realised that very quickly. China closed its borders to people entering the country. The problem is it didn't close them to people leaving the country. Other countries started closing their borders and hey, no new infections from externally. You get it? Borders do make a difference. And who in the fuck is name calling? What am I doing when I say this disease comes from China? This disease obviously from the spread pattern comes from a point in china it is so clear i've had this argument with my wife a few times because she sucks down a lot of this uh chinese propaganda and she's coming out with the oh but it probably happened in america and they brought it to china thing no the spread pattern does not work that way the spread pattern is showing clearly it comes out of china or there would have been an earlier spread in america and it would have been able to have been pinpointed, like it was pinpointed down to this disease existed in bats, in this place. Right? You don't get to just say, I'm name calling because I say, China. I like China. I like the Chinese people. I have a problem with the Chinese government. 
I have a ch problem with the Chinese government's policies. I have a problem with the way that this disease has been managed by China. I am not name calling. I am not even being fucking racist. The only way we can change this world is by changing our consciousness. And here she goes on the fucking, let's pray to the tree spirit, right? <sighs> a consciousness that calls us to consider our own self-interest. We're called upon to open our hearts to the knowledge of the true birthright of our species, a human community and sharing. Get fucked. Get... We're called to open our hearts to love. Just, I don't fucking love you at all. You're a fucking idiot. <laughs> so I, I, my... My other partner has this really brilliant shirt she loves. I've just redesigned it for her that says that she doesn't deal well with stupid people. She'd fucking hate you. Oh, she's a... Oh, let's see, who's here? We, we finished the article. That's nice. I'm fucking glad that's over. So Judith Shaw, who wrote this, is a graduate from the San Francisco Art Institute has been interested in myth, culture, mystic series, or, and myth, uh, mythical studies all her life. Okay, so she's a fucking idiot with no fucking qualification in anything other than, I'm guessing this is a piece of her crappy artwork. Um, and yeah, if that doesn't say uh, fucking tree spirits and air spirits to you, what the fuck does it say? Um, but that was all in that writing. There was there was nothing great in that writing, but the one thing it showed was this woman was some sort of fucking nut job spiritualist. Um, and being an atheist, they're the worst of the fucking religious people. I tell you, they're worse than any other religion on the planet because they are such fucking morons. <laughs> That's all I got to say. Okay. I've been the anti-theocrat. This will be my second video for the day. I hope you don't mind that I just fucking ranted at this woman. I think that's all she was worth. Uh, may your gods remain fictional, and I will see you in the next one.